All right, so Brother Winston, what is the most a person can make if they get real active in their first year of trucking business? If I was to put a number to it, you know, I would just be limiting you, right? Simply because yeah. it's all about networking. It's all about who you know and taking a hold of opportunities that other people can't see, right? So yeah. I, I can't leave with, with a specific number because I've seen so many different scenarios, came across so many different people that you just want to come up with a number that is suitable for you, something that, you know, that's your goal, what you want to reach and line up some opportunities that can touch into that. Cool, cool. And that's probably the best way you could have answered that anyway, because I was just on the channel today and I saw um, an interview with you did with a brother. I think he was in an Aston Martin or something like that, right? Yep. Aston and Martin, uh, yeah. he, he makes $3.5 million a year, guys. So you definitely want to go to the Winston P. Strategies channel on YouTube and on Instagram because he, he got a lot of people in his network that's really, really killing it and stuff. So, yes, right. to put a certain number on it would be difficult because it is based off of your network and it's based off of, you know, how hard do you want to go with it as well? Okay. So right. that's, that's, that was the question for the most, like we're trying to find a spectrum, but what would you say based on, you know, if you can find an average for a newbie, like their first year is typical. Okay. Now it, it definitely depends because trucking, I look at it as a category. I mean, there's so much that's under that umbrella that is just absolutely crazy. Right. Um, but yeah. if I'm going to use something like, you know, running, a trucking business, right? It's a lot of factors at play. And I, I do want to be fair because, you know, when you're, when you're talking about numbers and you're putting it in front of truckers, or if you're just putting it in front of regular people, everybody knows a truck driver, right? Somebody's uncle that's sure. watching this yeah. is a truck driver. Somebody's aunt just got her CDL and she's going to give yeah, you a different, sure. different number. <laughs> so uh, I don't want people to say, oh, Winston said you, you supposed to be making this. For um, sure, for sure. But I, but I would say, you know, starting off from the bottom, man, if you're a newbie, you know, you're going into like the, the, the CDL driving portion, man, you know, you, you can probably be making 60,000 a year. Right. Um, and that's if you, you're, you're doing, you know, everything right, so to speak, because you can start off rocky yeah. and, you know, you're not, you, you start off with a bad experience and you're not hitting your numbers. You're not making what you want to make. Now, if you come into this, as a entrepreneur, as a business minded individual, you can go from zero to a hundred thousand very, very quickly. You know, we've Boss. seen it with dispatchers. Um, even uh, Sean, I just interviewed him, and Sean doesn't have a CDL. Sean never had a trucking company, right? He came Hold across. On. I got to interrupt you right there. <laughs> okay. So this is bars right here. Put hashtag bars, put hashtag yes, low it in the, in the comment section, because I know how we started off a couple of y'all like, hold on. Well, I mean, what if you don't have a CDL? He just showed you, he just told you now definitely go over there and check it out. Like watch it. You definitely got to watch it. 3.5 million a year. And this dude don't even have, well, this brother, I don't want to call him a dude. This brother don't even have a CDL. So if you go into it, business minded, like he said, instead of just, you know, no offense, just a driver employee minded, then you definitely, you definitely can make a crazy amount of money. It's just up to you. All right, go ahead, bro. Yeah. And the difference is uh, for most people, you know, business minded individuals see opportunity a lot different. It's, it's like um, looking at the same picture and, you know, getting different ideas from that picture, right? Um, or different mm -hmm you know, feelings or emotions, you know, whatever it, it is that you're staring at. So when you're looking at the money that's inside of trucking, a lot of people can't see it because they're looking through the lens of a driver. And unfortunately, if you're driving, you're only limited to, you know, what you're capable of doing physically, you know, you're limited to where you're capable of driving. And if you're using one truck, then there's no way you can move more than one load in a day. You know, not, not more than one load, but you can't move 30 loads in one day, if you're the one moving those loads, right? You have to have, exactly. you know, you got to scale. So the way I approach trucking is, you know, look at it from a business perspective, because whether you like business or not, and the reason why I'm tracking this way is because I've been in a ton of conversation with truck drivers, right? And they don't yeah. want to look at it as a business opportunity because it's it's like a disrespect. They, they, you know, truck drivers say, hey, it's a lifestyle. It, you know, this is not an entrepreneurship thing. This is what we do for a living. 
And unfortunately, whether you like to look at it as a business or not, you really have no choice because the trucking business is not truly a business. Like I've, I've never really said that to anybody before because I don't want to discourage anyone. But if you think about what we're calling a business, you have a shipper and you have a customer, right? So you have someone with their product and <laughs> you have someone buying it or you have someone distributing it. At what point does the truckers come in, right? We're in between two different entities and we're transporting it. That's, that's not truly a service that we're providing because our service, you know, you can get an automated truck to do it. You know, they can get someone that just got a CDL to do it. You know, so you can't compare that to like an electrician, right? That's, to- that's a totally different type of service that we're talking about here. So if you're just talking about me getting a guy to come pick up a load to take it here, that's truly not a self-sustaining entity on its own because you're dependent entirely upon someone else's freight. Because people say, if the wheels are not turning, you're not earning. What we should be saying is, if there's no freight, you're not going anywhere. So <laughs> if you if you can't make money without freight with a truck, then that proves to me that it's not truly a, like a real business, so to speak. It's, it's almost like it's a necessary evil because the, the shippers don't really want it. They don't, shippers don't want to pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars to move anything. If I can figure out how to cut costs on you, I'm going to do that if I'm the one with the goods. I don't, I don't, there's no reason why, you know, I want to give you that money. I want to figure out how can I retain as a business. So everybody's looking at their bottom line. So that's why we see this type of volatility. That's why we see so much in the trucking space because people don't really look at it as what it truly is. So there is a such thing where you can be the manufacturer, the distributor, you know, you can do all this under a trucking umbrella. And I'll give you one big example. I mean, look at Amazon, look at Pepsi, right? You look at Pepsi, Come you see on, trucks man. going down the road. You're like, oh, that's a trucking business. No, that's Pepsi. <laughs> that's not a trucking business. That is Pepsi delivering their own goods, selling their own goods, distributing their own goods. They have their own customer and they realize, well, we don't need a trucking business for, for our own operator. We need, we need a truck large enough to move this amount of products over here. And by default, we have to follow the DOT. We got to get MC numbers, but they truly yeah. are not focused on, Hey, we want trucks. We want, no, no that's, that's not the way this is working out. It is just the necessary steps that it takes to sell a product. So you can't have those conversations with people that do yeah. not want to see that. They, and it's not that they can't see, they don't want to see that. And, and that's the problem. No. Right. Yeah. Listen, can you hear me? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't understand how much game you just dropped on y'all. Because, look, my stepdad, and I love my stepfather. I haven't talked to him for a while. But once I figured out this marketing and advertising thing, man, and I realized we can be the owners, I was like, did you know that we could get you out of that truck? Because he was having back problems, all type of stuff. I said, we can get you out of that truck. We can own, we can just take one or two trucks, just like the truck driving school I went to. So what you was the game he was just dropping. Let me just tell y'all, unless you can control the supply and the demand, you really don't have a sustainable business. Like he said, Pepsi has a product, their own product, and they can control their own trucks. So they don't really have to go outside for anything, which is why Pepsi can make up to 19 million dollars a day. Okay, that's a freaking business, supply and demand. So let me just go right here. (laughs) My stepdad, right? He'd been in the game for a while as a driver. Then he became an owner operator, but it's still not, it's still not, like you said, it's still not. But anyway, (laughs) so I was trying to get him. I'm like, yo, we, we can create the school. Like we can just do the school, like the school I went to, where we charge a couple dollars for people to come in. But then we make, uh, partnership deals with the trucking companies that need new drivers and we get paid percentages off of the miles that they're running or some type of flat rate fee or something like that, blah, blah, blah. Right. So <laughs> I was trying to explain this very thing to them. And like you said, when, when they're the truckers, it, it's very little percentage of truckers that think outside the box. And, I, and there's no offense to any trucker that's watching this, but they usually just want to get in the truck and ride, you know? So, yeah. so it's, it's good that we're uh, making content for those of you who haven't yet uh, been programmed and gotten stubborn and stuck in your ways. And you might be at the beginning of this journey. That's why I wanted to bring you guys, uh, uh, bring you guys this 
this specialist right here, uh, Brother Winston, because it's not a lot of people that's going to tell you the real. So I watched a few of his content videos and I was like, yeah, this this dude know what he's talking about. And he actually give a damn about his audience. You know, a lot of people just saying stuff, but he actually cares about you guys. So we're going to go ahead and continue. <clears throat> but that was cold blooded, man. I like that. <laughs> All right. So what yeah. sectors of the trucking business niche do you personally have experience in? OK, so uh, I have experience mostly as a trucking business owner. So I, I actually have a truck. I actually have my own MC, my own DOT, you know, and I did every single thing myself. Right. Besides, ha you know, paying taxes. I don't file my, ta my own taxes anymore, um, but I do every single thing myself. I have experience also in dispatching. And mm. experience also in management of uh, of businesses, and you know, involving inside of trucking, involving outside of trucking. So that is the area that I have experiences, and also uh, as marketing. Right, marketing is an okay. area where I've taken on in the last, I want to say, two years. I started taking it real seriously, and that that really, you know, encaptivates all of my experience. But it's mostly literally getting out here, running a trucking business you know, 18 wheelers. Um, I've done oversized, you know, I've done, I, I did the, I had, I did have a box truck business when I first, first, first started. Um, but it wasn't long before I decided to get rid of the box truck and actually get, you know, 18 wheeler. So my area yeah. of specialty would be more on the lines of flatbed, you know, heavy hauling and that type of thing. Nice. That's yeah. where the money is at. The, them flatbeds yeah. right there. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, boy. It's better, yeah, better for boy. better for local too. Better for the local uh, <laughs> local guys. Yeah. Listen, y'all. If y'all are watching this right now, we might be speaking a language that might be new to you. But I guarantee you, you definitely want to stick around and keep watching this because one month, uh, one one language that's not new to you is money. That's a universal language. Oh, okay. Yeah. And one business model that you know for sure is actually real. And legitimate is trucking. Since you've been a child, you've been sitting in a car, you know, on a highway and you just see them passing by you. This is something that's not just some, oh, man, that sounds cool. I, I wonder, can I do something like that? This is real. This is legitimate. And this is something that can change your life. Whether you want to be a driver or whether you want to own a trucking business. Now, here at Anti-Job University, obviously, we're going to nudge you a little bit towards the running your own freaking business right because you want right. freedom right right time freedom location freedom financial freedom all the freedoms um okay <laughs> so that's cool so he has experience in dispatching we'll talk a little bit about that and he owns the business so check this out y'all leverage you understand you're never going to have all those freedoms i was just talking about it's literally impossible to have all those freedoms i was talking about without applying leverage. He owns the trucks. There's other people that want to drive. He can literally put those people in the trucks. All right. I know it sounds oversimplified, but guys, that's leverage. That allows him back his freaking time. That allows him back his time. And that's what you want. As we get older, like, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? 35. You know, 35. No, I'm 37, man. <laughs> right? Like, I don't have money itself is not that important to me at this age. I want to be able to do what I want to do, where I want to do it, with who I want to do it with. So if that's how you guys are feeling, he has a community. So let's just go straight into this right here. So I saw that you have a community is on school and it's called Trucking Mastery. I'm going to peer pressure him into charging extremely high for this. So if you're watching this right now, live and it is what's this day june 2nd i strongly suggest you go in there and you get into this community i'm gonna leave the link below and it's a community it's called trucking mastery and it comes with massive value to beginners and even if you're not a beginner let's say that you're uh you you're a veteran you've been a driver but now you want to cross over to the business part of this come on you deserve to be a business owner you understand what I'm saying? How long do you want the whip cracked on you? So his community will show you how to convert over from the employee to the trucking business owner. OK, so um, that will be in a, in a pinned comment. So let's see. <clears throat> let's see. Oh, so what what exactly is taught 
in the community. Okay, so just give a little. Oh yeah, sure. So I, I realized with trucking that you have to wear multiple hats, right? When when you start out as a truck driver and you get a CDL, the next thing you say is, "Well, I want to get my own truck," right? Once you get, mm-hmm. once you just got your own truck, what what took place is that you just became your own office personnel. So you have yeah. to understand, you know, how to set up your business structure. You know, if we're talking LLC and different things like that. And when we're talking compliance, now you have to make sure, you know, you know how to file for your MC, you know how to register, you know, everything that, that you, uh, compliance is a whole, it could be 30 things that fall under compliance. So when we're talking about driving a truck um, and having a trucking business, you can get audited, right? And they want to make sure you have a driver file. They want to make sure you have a maintenance file. So now you just essentially became your own you know, office personnel, right? You have to have customer service. So if you don't know how to talk to people and get loads and, you know, if you don't understand how to, how to do any of that, customer service is one of those areas that is very vital for you to understand how to talk to people. You know, you got to be able to have sales skills. So what I've realized is that when someone says, I want to start a trucking business, what, what they don't realize is they're literally saying that I want to develop 20 different new skills. And I yeah. said, okay, what can I teach that can help people to get to a level where they understand this business, you know, for what it really is. It was very hard for me to say, I want to teach dispatching um, yeah. simply because everybody wants to know it. And I'm like, all y'all want to know is dispatching. It's super easy to do that, but I don't feel like that's all you need to know. Everybody wants to start their own trucking business, but they can't operate it. They don't know how to even talk to a driver. They don't even know how to necessarily run payroll. They're, they're cash apping guys and doing all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. So dispatchers want to start their own business eventually, but they don't understand trucking. Truckers want to become dispatching. So they don't understand dispatching. And then everybody yeah. loosely throws the term, well, I want to be a broker of all things. Now you want to be a broker. So I'm like, oh, okay, I-, I can't just put out all this information because I don't want to give you know the appearance like I'm a know-it-all or whatever the case may be. But I do yeah. want people to feel like you come here and there's really not much else that you need to know. So what I put yeah. together is like about four or five courses. One teaches you how to become a dispatcher. The other one teaches you how to run a trucking business. The other one teaches you how to legit sell and buy a trucking business. And then I believe the last one I have in there teaches how I was able to you know, make money, survive as a local owner operator. And I give you the exact shippers that I use. Um, I teach you permitting. I help you understand hold on. securement. Oh, hold on, man. See, y'all gonna see what I'm talking about when I say I'm finna. I'm finna, yo. If you were here, we would need like a, a, a yo headlock type game. You hear me? <laughs> he gotta raise them prices, so he's giving you his black book. Okay, that reminds me of when Br- Russell Brunson was on stage. Uh, you know who Russell Brunson is? Yes, I do. Okay, he was on stage and he was talking about I bet I can sell my uh my cell phone to you guys for a million dollars. And they was like, please, my cell phone. You know, the audience was looking like my cell phone probably costs more than yours, blah, blah, blah. He said, Well, what if I told you? And he got this idea from uh, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street movie when he was talking about I, let me sell to you this pen. And everybody tries to sell their features and, and benefits and all this extra stuff. Yeah, you see, this pen is made out of this metallic stuff from an asteroid and all that. Nobody cares about that, right? So basically what he said, well, what if I told you this phone had the contacts of Tony Robbins, uh, Dean Graziazzi, Myron Golden, and, and all the people that are making millions of dollars a year. And when you hold this phone, you'll be able to do partnerships with them just because they're in your contact list now. Tell me you wouldn't buy that phone for a million dollars then. You see? So, 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 so anybody watching this right now, the value of his school community just went up just just not even because of the courses. He's also he's going to show you how to become the dispatcher, do that if you want to, you know, start the trucking business and get other people to drive it if you want to and all of that. But one thing he just said, one thing that you would have to go through that other people aren't even mentioning is those contacts. He's going to give you those contacts. I feel like punching a wall right now. Okay, let's 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 let's, let's okay. 
That's cr- I'm sorry for interrupting. Y'all no, just good. need to know. Like, I hope y'all are seeing how, like, what I'm seeing. Like, I, I can see. Like, go ahead, man. Go ahead. And you know, like I said, people say, you know, I want to get a part of the trucking business, right? I say yeah. the trucking business is not what we're being told, and we're all having separate conversations, and we're saying different things, right? But yeah. where can you go to really get a good understanding of of what's going on? Because you know, uh, l- let's just go from picking up a load to de- delivering a load, right? You picking up, you picking up the load. You need a dispatcher booking loads. You got to come in contact with a broker. You got to deal with a shipper, right? Now you got to get it transported. Now you got to close these invoices out. So you're going to be dealing with factoring. Then you're going to be dealing with payroll. At 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 not one point, you know, one person truly understands what the next guy is doing right because you're not you're not a professional you're not doing his job right so what trucking masteries is designed to do is to help you to see how everything works together collectively to take you out of that driver's mindset or out of that dispatcher's mindset or out of that broker's mindset so you can see that there's more money than what you were able to see the first time around because if you came in thinking about it as a dispatcher you walk away like, dude, I just, I know how to buy a trucking business. Like sure. I was going to start from scratch. Like a lot of guys say, man, I want to have my own. I, I'm, I'm going to go start my own trucking business. My, my train of thought is, why don't you just buy one? If you got a good credit score, why would you waste it on buying a $90,000 truck when you can take out an SBA loan and you can buy you a trucking company and, and, on. and then you literally manage it. It, it, a lot of them come with training already. A lot of them already come with the business owner telling you like, hey, I'll walk you through everything you need to do. So an example of that is FedEx routes, right? Uh, my cousin, yeah. he's a marketer. Um, he works with some of the top people in the whole country, like from Microsoft to the Hawks. He works with a lot of different people. He, he only works with enterprise clients. And he just called okay. me the other day, other day saying that, oh, guess what? I'm buying a trucking business. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, dude, you, you, barely got a class C license. You don't know, you've never even seen a truck up close. And he was yeah. like, well, he found out about these routes or something like that. And I'm like, what is it? He's like, FedEx. I'm like, dude, like this is my backyard. So I was like, won't you use an SBA loan? And he's like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So he's buying a trucking business, literally never even spoke to a truck or probably face to face before. And you have people in the industry with great credit that know nothing about these things. They, they have no clue that it even exists. Like, for example, I have people come to me all the time, like, yo, I want to get a box truck. I'm like, cool. Why don't you just buy a bread lane? Like, what's that? What's a bread lane? Or Google it. Google bread lane. Go to Google and type in bread lanes, right? These are you lanes that it. you can purchase that you can run and you just need a box big enough to house however, however much bread you're trying to haul around your local city from the bakery, from the bakeries to the, 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 the clients that are purchasing the bread, right? Those yeah. are conversations that we do not have at all. And that's, yeah. that's the problem for me to tell you how much money you can make because my question would, would then be for you, well, how much opportunity do you see? If you say, how much money can I make? Then I say, well, how much opportunity can you see? And as soon as you start mm-hmm. talking about, oh, I want to become, a, I want to own a trucking business, immediately right there, I realize that you have just taken yourself from you know, maybe 400,000 a year to about 100,000 a year, because that's all you can see is a $100,000 opportunity. You can't see that you can come in this business. And literally, if you have good credit, if you can get an SBA loan and you can get a, 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 if you have a 620, you can get approved for an SBA business loan to go buy a trucking company that the revenue stream is a million dollars. You just, you just came into business running a million dollar business. You didn't come in starting from the bottom, like most guys, and you don't have to. But again, yeah. it's, it's two different people operating in the same space, right? I matter yeah. of fact, this is the last thing I'll say about that. In 2014, you had, um, you had a gentleman that, you know, he, he was working in the corporate world and he heard about these things called FedEx routes. He heard about it. So he decided, well, I'm going to go over there and, and figure out what this is. He went over there and became one of the top guys in the FedEx space. I'm going to think of his name here shortly. He became one of the top yeah. guys, never even knew anything about a truck, but he just knew about the opportunity. Never knew yeah. anything about a truck. And you had all these owner operators selling out to this guy and he just had capital. He said, yeah, I just had a little bit of money and credit and I went in and bought and bought and bought and bought. And I think um, the name of their company is like um, Lane. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up, but you can Google FedEx Ross on 
YouTube, sorry, you can go to YouTube, type in FedEx Lanes, and that guy will come up because he became the king of it. And I knew okay. about that opportunity, but the difference was at, at that point when I knew about the opportunity, I was, I'm going to be honest, I was thinking like a driver. I heard about it that you can buy these FedEx Lanes, but I was thinking like a driver at the time when I heard about it. But now, dude, I just went seven years and this dude started off ahead of me. And I, I'm seven years, I'm still trying to catch up to what this guy did seven years ago. And I'm like, okay. I have to switch the way I think. I got to change this. And I give that back to people because I don't want you to go seven years and realize that you've been doing it wrong. I, w- I want to save yeah. you that time. And that's why I'm doing it, what I do so cheap. You're like, okay, why are, you, why are you so cheap? What's the catch? Well, the catch is if I truly felt like I had nothing else to offer, then yeah, you would probably be paying me 10K for this. So because I feel like I have way more to offer and this is just a small portion of it, you can come in, you can get all this information. For, for what you spend or what you lose. Some people lose $10 a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, where's my money? I, I, well, what happened? What, what, what subscription I just paid? You don't even know. So for yeah. what you're joining with, it's not even an investment. It, it's like, it's me saying, hey, I don't want this to be free because I want to keep scammers out. I want to keep people out that, that, you know, they don't mean good. And free yeah. attracts people that, you know, if you ever seen come in, a, a sign that, on a restaurant, they say, come in and eat free. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure it's food, right? So exactly. that's why I have a paywall just to kind of keep that that type of mentality away from me, or else, yeah, it would be free. But you know, you you yeah. you get some great insight, and that's what I'm attacking. I'm just attacking the person's vision. I, I want you to be able to see clearly, so you can go out and make a better business decision. Man, that's a good example. Yo, think about that, y'all. For all y'all freebie seekers, I mean, you know what? This is a crazy question because some of y'all are weird. So if y'all saw a restaurant that said free food, y'all were probably actually going there. And, but but look, I got to pray for y'all health if you are actually going to a free restaurant. This is not Mr. Beast in real life. You understand? So in real life, if you go in there and they talking about get everything free is probably the food they was finna put in the dumpster or some type of liquidation situation that's going on. And you don't want to be the one they experiment on with your health. Right. So basically he creates a paywall, which is extremely low barrier to entry just for people to be able to, you know, uh, those to attract those uh, that can afford it. Right. And that see value in it. And that want to invest something in, in in the future that they're trying to build and everything like that. Because most people that aren't really on nothing, even if it's $10, this is why I tell people you can sell high ticket because it's just as hard to sell something that's $10 as it is to sell something that's 100 or or $1,000. If a person isn't like really trying to do nothing else that you still can be like, well, let me see some more testimonials. I, mean, like, I remember doing that with a person that was buying something for like, like 50 bucks. I was like, hold on. No, no, no. You got Like I got all this content and stuff on YouTube. You want to see testimonials going on there? Like I'm not going to sit here and baby you for something. that's a couple dollars that let me know it's not me. It's them. Right. So uh, he he wants to make sure you guys see. Uh, if you're watching this right now and you've been watching this long, I already know. Like, have y'all probably put a pause on this video and already started to go sign up if you got common sense. OK, so let's get to it, because I know this is a question that a lot of them been wondering, um, like out of all of those, like uh, without a CDL, can you give some examples, uh, you know, like some of the ways people would earn with this? Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, number one, as a dispatcher, that's, that's number one. That's the most, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm going to take the word easy out of my vocabulary because to yeah. some people that paints different pictures, right? So it, it is yeah, the most, sure. I, I want to say, you know, easy to comprehend. You can comprehend this pretty easy, right? It doesn't mean easy okay. to go out and make money, but easy to comprehend, right? You okay. are searching for the work and you're relaying the information back to whoever's transporting the work. So mm-hmm. that is that is a way that you can make a ton of money, right? And when I say a ton of money, the figures are going to be ranging from $300 a week to upwards of maybe ten to $15,000 a week, simply because you can grow, you can scale. And yeah. here, here's, the, here's the easiest way to look at it. So when I use the word easy, I'm going to make sure I emphasize what I'm, what I'm meaning behind it. So here's the easiest okay. way to look at it. Ask yourself, what are all truckers looking for at all times? And I'm going to answer that. I give you one second to think about it. Your one second is up. 
All truckers are looking for freight. Everybody. Yes. All truckers are looking for freight. So if you are looking for the freight and you found it and you can bring it back to truckers, you will make money because there's no one you can call that's looking for freight and you won't make money. And that's what they're looking for. It's impossible. If someone's looking to make money and you found the money, you're bringing, bringing it back to them. There's no way you're not going to make money because at that point, you've just solved that person's problem and you have just saved that person's business. Right. And you have just made that that's person, right. you know, that much more motivated to keep going. So dispatchers are business stabilizers, motivators, like, you know, they're, they're very, very needed, even though dispatchers get a really bad rep sometimes, because when you're having this conversation with truckers, like, oh, I don't need a dispatcher. Yeah, you're right. They don't. No, no trucker needs a dispatcher. What they need is freight. So you, you don't approach truckers like, hey, I'm a dispatch. No, no, no. That's, a, that's the quickest way to get rejected because sure. you're, you're, you're essentially saying, hey, this is what you're looking for. I'm looking for a trucker. So when you approach them like, hey, I'm a dispatcher. Are you looking for me? Of course not. I'm not looking for you. So instead you say, hey, I know where some freight is. Hey, sure. I, I, I have, hey, I have a couple shippers that are, are looking for a trucking business. Would that happen to be you? Exactly. I mean, I mean, if you approach me like that, regardless of what you are, I'm ready to hire you because I, I'm oh. realizing very quickly I can make some money off of what you're that telling me. Hard. So let that's give, what you let me let me give them a quick example for, for my audience. Some of you guys do lead generation. When you contact a local business, if you tell them that you are a lead generator or you you sell leads or you do SEO or marketing for businesses, they gonna be like, look. I ain't trying to deal with all that. I ain't trying to hear you. How much this is? How much this is? Boom, boom, boom. But if you if you reach out to him and you're like, look, I got a guy that uh, um, has a wedding like in a month from now, and he needs a limousine for the fifteenth. It's going to fit twenty eight people. Uh, they have a budget of this and this. Um, do you have a fleet that can hold those 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 people or whatever? Now they're interested because you're talking their language. You're talking the ultimate goal. So you're seeing past the, 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 the limo owner is going to see past the fact that this is a lead generator or a marketing agency calling. They're going to see the job. So this is what he's saying. You, if you're talking freight, which is what they want, that's the language. That's the ultimate goal, the freight. If you're talking freight, then they can like skip past your imperfections of being a dispatcher. Yep. All right. So these are some of the things he's going to teach you. Go ahead. Yeah. Yep. So that so that's what you want to do. And in my um, community, you know, you're going to learn how to become a dispatcher. But what you're actually going to be exposed to is services. Right. Because it's, it's so funny. I've actually never seen a dispatcher that had a dispatching class teach this. And I've, and I've paid attention to a lot of them. What they teach you yeah. how to do is how to get on a load board, how to negotiate with a broker you know, how to prospect for truck drivers, you know, set up your business, your LLC. And, you know, maybe they'll give you some more ongoing training as you go on, right? The problem with that is very, very simple, right? You have a lot of competition. And if everybody has the same exact skill set, how can you expect to stand out? And how can you expect for somebody to do business with you when they have, I mean, you have dispatchers calling outside of the country for crying out loud. You have, you know, you have like, for every U.S. dispatcher that calls my phone, I have like 20 that are out of the country that barely can speak English. So that lets me know that if the market is reduced to that, what what is going to cause me, who me, me personally now, what will cause me to use you as a dispatcher, right? When, when I have so many, much different options, there's only a few things that's going to separate you. And one of those things are going to be services. Now, this is that's not right. talked about inside of the industry at all. But I'm going to paint a very clear picture for you. If you approach a truck driver and you get shot down as a dispatcher, because you're not able to see how much money you can truly make, your, your approach is wrong. And that's why I deal with the vision of the person first, right? So how about you see how much money is involved with running a trucking business? Where do we start? Let's start with paperwork. How many truckers out there, they have to collect their invoices. They have to send them. That's a service, okay? Um, For sure. They got to do payroll. That's a service. Okay. They have to stay compliant. That is a service. They got to file IFTA. That is a service. They have to get permitting. That is a service. They have to hire drivers if they're if they're running with you know two or more trucks. Well, guess what? What 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 goes into hiring drivers? Guess what? You have to do recruiting. You have to do onboarding. You have to do drug drug testing. Um, you have to get the you know get get the um get all the paperwork signed and and, and get everything. 
you know, le- legitimized, right? Get everything over to the insurance. Insurance gives you the okay. Now you have a driver on board. So, you know, I That's don't even exactly know how many. I don't, yes, I don't even know how many different services that I, I just listed. But where I discovered this, this, this secret niche for trucking was when I started dealing with a company called OOIDA. They're like the biggest trucking place you can go to to get insurance, right? But yeah. I thought it was very, very interesting. When I went to their website and I looked at services, they offered healthcare. They offered, you know, financing and truck this and truck that. I'm like, what, what does an insurance place? And when, and when I say insurance, I'm specifically talking about insurance for your truck, right? I'm not talking about healthcare. I'm like, what are they, what are they doing offering 30 different services? What, what's happening here? Well, guess what? Truckers need it. And that company yeah. identified <laughs> it. But we on the ground, we don't think like that. So if I need a, I, like currently I don't need a dispatcher, but if somebody approached me and said, Hey, I can manage your trucking business. And if you need me to dispatch, I can do that. I would immediately say, yes, please. Because guess what? I literally do not want to manage this right now. If you can come yeah. in and you can take it over and you can, I don't care if you found me a dispatcher and you're the dispatcher. I don't care if you said, right. Hey, I'm, I'm coming in and I will manage your invoices. I will do your recruiting. I, I will I will provide you these services. Well, now the conversation has been opened up for dispatching. Maybe I don't need a dispatcher right now, but maybe I will in two years. But you've already been here helping me with my internal everyday business operations and obligations and all that, right? Yep. And because of that, dispatching becomes secondary. So I teach to lead with the services first because services, we can't escape. Some truckers dispatch themselves, but they can't run and file that paperwork next Tuesday if they're out on the road. They're going to need somebody to, you know, get this signed off and send this out for me so that sometimes they need errands run and they can't get it done. So if you're looking at it from that lens, you're going to start seeing more money. Now, maybe you're not interested in dispatching anymore. Maybe you just want to be a permitting business. So I teach you how to do that because now you're like, wait a minute, truckers need permits. And if I can file 60 permits a day, maybe, right? And I'm getting paid a flat rate every single month, dude. Maybe you're making 3k a month, and you're just a permitting service. And there's plenty of permitting services out there, plenty of them that have large yep. amounts of, tr- and that's all they want to do because they figured yep. it out and they saw like, okay, they may have started off as a dispatcher and working with a company, and then the company needed a ton of permits. It's like, you know what? I'm just gonna do permitting because I see that there's demand. I see that if I'm hauling an oversized, I got to get a permit for for darn there every freaking state that I'm going into, and somebody has to sit there. Somebody has to make the call and yep. it's very dangerous for a trucker to work, you know, 14 hours a day and literally wear 30 different hats just to get the load there. It's dangerous. So yeah, I, know. I, I teach I know. vision, man, look and see what we need and provide what we need. And in return, you'll get what way more than what you bargained, way more what you signed up for. So this is going better than I ever could have hoped. Uh, <laughs> do, uh, yeah. What, what he's explaining is sub niching a niche. So you'll look at it like just, oh, I want a trucking business, but you can break the services down. You'll still be in the trucking industry, but if you break the services down, you can make so much more money. For example, uh, you might want to go after a plastic surgeon, right? Oh, I need, I know I want to do advertising and marketing for a plastic surgeon, right? But if you reach out to a general practitioner, plastic surgeon and stuff, it's just going to seem you know, like what? Okay. And it's very difficult. But if you go to their websites and you go to their services or their, their, uh, uh procedures tab is going to have rhinoplasty is going to have cool sculpting is going to have, uh, tummy tugs, mommy makeovers is going to have a uh, facelifts, chin lifts. Uh, what the hell is the one with the, with the eye lift, the situation. If you would pick the one that they that 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 uh is the least effort and preparation work for a plastic surgeon pays them the most and you just approach them with that yo i'm only going to bring you uh rhinoplasty people right you know like now you're not just like yeah i want to work with a plastic surgeon i just send surgery leads or something like that like now you know hey I can charge this much, meaning I can make this much. You can start having predictable income, like what he was what he was talking about with the permits, because you'll know exactly since you chose a niche and you didn't just go wide, you'll know exactly how much you're making them. So you'll know exactly how much you can make from them. 
So he's going to teach you this, how to approach with services versus just having this, this broad you know, trucking business. I want to be in a trucking business. This is genius, man. Um, I have a book and this is not me promoting it. This is relevant to this. It's called Only Versus Best, right? And what he was talking about with the dispatching courses and stuff like that, he's he's telling the truth. Is not many of them. Is I haven't seen any of them that talks about the services how he's talking about like approaching with the services. And when you are the only one, then I mean you you can't you're not on a shelf with the rest of the product. You're not on the shelf. No one can compare because you're the only. You're not trying to be the best. He's not trying to be the best. He's the only. So if you guys try to go get this from anywhere else, you're literally going to be doing yourself a disservice because now you're just dealing with people that are competing to be the best, meaning the best is is perception, right? Like like is is as opinionated, right? But then you have someone out here. I tell people all the time, the custom, the, the company that cares the most makes the most. If you have a, a, a person like Winston who writes down and documents and researches all of the different ways that you guys can fail and then creates the opportunities for you guys to succeed and says, hey, how can we approach this in a unique way to where we're bringing value to the truckers if we're doing this, we're bringing value first to, uh, you know, dispatchers or whatever we're doing, like he's leading with the services. So you're going to win no matter what. Right. So that's just some war strategy for you right there, man. <laughs> you're killing it, man. You're killing it. Yeah, so it. <laughs> for real talk. So if you had to start over from scratch, like knowing everything, you know, you get to keep the knowledge that you have now. Right. You have to start over from scratch and you needed to make money as soon as possible. Which one of those ways we were just talking about? Would you go about it? I would uh, first start off with uh, dispatching. Um, I, I think it's the best way to scale. And it's one of the most powerful ways to scale because you can literally offer your services for free. And mm -hmm. what happens is the return you get on knowledge is is just way more. It's, it's unmatched, right? Um, because you get yeah. to learn how a trucking business is operating. From there, you can leverage you know, any type of financial opportunities that you may have available to you. Like, let's say if, if you have equity in your home or something, you can then yeah. take some money from some other source, you know, buy you a truck and put it on to the truck, trucking business that you're helping to dispatch for. So now you have yeah. a trucking business without the liability and you know where the money's coming from. You know how much the truck is going to make. And if, even if you did not want to do that, I believe it is the fastest way to make money simply because there's so many services that we need. And all you would need yeah. to understand is, does a trucker deal with on a daily basis? And what do they pay for? And you'll realize very quickly that a lot of truckers, they try to save as much money as they can. They'll, they'll use their kids. They'll use their wife. And their wife will be doing a lot of stuff at home. <laughs> she may be burnt out. She may not want to do this stuff, right? So if you're able to go in see a, a husband and wife couple and, and you're offering your service for, services for free. You just want to learn. Eventually they're going to say, Hey, you know, my wife wants to go on vacation or something. And, you know, can you for take sure. over and do this? Right. So I, I believe it's just the quickest way um, because everything else does involve some type of capital, some type of startup. If you want to become a broker, you got to have some type of capital. If you want to run a trucking business, you have to, but as a dispatcher, it's just knowledge. It, I mean, you can sit and study, you know, I want to say for about a week and you can understand how this stuff actually works. And you can literally go out there and land a potential client immediately. Maybe you're in mm -hmm. the right place at the right time. Maybe you were just good looking and that trucker, male or female, decides, yo, I want to <laughs> work with her or I want to work with him. I, don't, I, I just like him. I don't want to say no. Right. Because a lot of times we don't realize you know, we got to look our best because you never know when someone is admiring something they see about you. And it's just, they can't explain it, but it's just what they saw. They like, okay, I, I don't know what it is about that person, but I, I like them. I do want to work with them because there is a built-in element of liking or disliking somebody to get business done, right? We, we all understand that. I mean, just a little side note, if you're paying attention to real estate, if you've noticed, most of these real estate agents look glamorous right now. You, you think sure. it's just 
you think they look like supermodels for no reason. They understand that it's something about a real estate agent looking really attractive that everyone wants to have that real estate agent doing their business for them. Right. So, you know, that, that's, that's neither here nor there, but the point is dispatching to me is a not a, a knowledge based business. And if you can get the knowledge, you can then turn around and turn it into currency. And, and where could you do this from? Is it stationary? Do you need to be in a specific state or could you, could you travel the world? Could you do this from anywhere? Where, like how, how does this work? Most of the dispatchers that, yes, most of the dispatchers that call my phone barely speak English. And I'm assuming they're somewhere in India. So that, so you can do it. If they can do it, I mean, I don't care where, if maybe you can do it from India too, right? So if they can do it from there, you can do it from anywhere because all you need is a cell phone, internet connection, and you're quick on the draw, right? If if you can be quick on the draw, get some loads, communicate strongly, power of persuasion, (laughs) maybe some sales skills. Yes, you can you can turn this into a very 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 good business good business model. So yes. And and I don't want to go without saying that this is a stressful position because you are dealing with a lot of phone calls, you're dealing with a lot of people that are stressed, you're dealing with stressed shippers, stressed drivers, um people that are handling thousands and thousands of dollars and one mistake turns out to be a half a million dollar mistake. It could be a, a reefer trailer that has ice cream and they got $600,000 on the back of that truck. So be prepared that you are dealing with a high stress level environment. So if you're not able to deal in those type of environments, this may not be the best thing for you. However, if you're coming from a sales job, if you're a car salesman, this will be a cakewalk because you done been told no a hundred times. You done been yelled at. I came from the car industry, so dispatching for me was light work because as a service writer, when I was doing it, you're going to get cussed out five customers out of 20, managers going to yell at you. But if you have not been, you know, just conditioned under those environments, dispatching can be rough. If that's not a factor for you, then this is a business that you can come in and you can, you know, really just take advantage of the opportunities. For sure. So if you're a woman watching this, pull up your big draws. If you're a man watching this, man, like gird your loins, you hear me? It's worth it. You understand what I'm saying? And one of the things he said is he brought up the point that like you get hella calls from India. I'm in Panama right now. Like I keep asking these obvious questions because people keep having these obvious questions. Can this be done from anywhere? Yes. More than likely, if there's internet and phones in your country, you can do this stuff from there. You hear me? So like, y'all don't have to like keep asking that, but we don't mind answering it. It might come with a little bit of sarcasm, but we'll answer it for you. So yes, this can be done in any country. Um, okay. So does like for the dispatching in particular, um, how much time would you recommend a newbie to put in uh, with this at the beginning? Like just okay. to get the moment. Okay. Just to, just to get everything down at the beginning, I, you know, I, Learning is is definitely it depends on who we're who's learning and what pace they're learning at. Um, most importantly, you want to understand you know freight and how that freight works, right? So nine times out of ten, when you start doing this, you're probably going to be dealing with some over the road trucker, and now you're dealing with time zones. So you want to understand time zones, right? You want to understand you know what a trucker does day in and day out because your job is dependent upon their schedule. You can't work outside of their schedule, right? So you got to understand their compliance. So for example, truckers drive, truckers have 14 hours of day, 14 hours in a day that they can work, 11 hours that they can drive. And we're operating on an eight hour lunch break cycle. So you have to be able to trip plan according to the trucker's compliance. And you need to know how to understand time zones, you know, how to Like communicating with brokers, I don't look at as a big problem or a knowledge barrier because it's no different than what you've already been doing. It's just that now you want an opportunity and you're calling in for that opportunity. So it's simple. It's it's just it's it's people and it's nothing so unique about a broker why you would need so much training on it. So I I look at that as being the least thing you need to worry about. I have inside of the uh, class a recorded conversation and I, I believe that's enough. You see how I talk. And some uh, brokers are super nice. Some, you know, you have a lot of brokers that are jerks, but you got some, hey, hello, how are you doing? So, I mean, they just made your job so much more easier, right? And and you can tell them, hey, I'm a brand new dispatcher. Okay, great. I'll walk you through this. So, I mean, it's not a big, scary thing. 
So I, I would say to sum all of that up and put a time to it. I mean, if you can get a week's worth of fundamentals and training and hands on, like, you know, a couple hours a day, maybe if you give yourself and let's say, let's say you, you went into your friend's trucking business, you say, Hey, I want to understand what you do every single day for one week. You should be good enough with that to become a dispatcher. Cause I like to say every trucker can become a dispatcher. Not yeah. every dispatcher can necessarily become a trucker. It doesn't go in that direction. But if you yeah. are a truck driver, yes, you can stop today and literally become a dispatcher because your job involves dispatching because yeah. <laughs> not everybody has one. Some, you know, it's been truckers running for 10 years. Like, I dispatch myself. It's been truckers running for two months. Hey, I dispatch myself. So therefore yeah. you can become a dispatcher, but dispatchers, you know, you would need a CDL to become a trucker. So, you know, about a week. Okay. So recap, <clears throat> no CDL needed for dispatcher position, position, dispatcher business. And, uh, you can do it from anywhere. Um, you can start that for free. Uh, all you need is the knowledge, which is found in his community. Um, on top of that, guys, like you can go from being just, a truck. Just, I don't like to use the word free. Sorry. I don't like to use the word free. I, I'll take that back because to some degree you, st and I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I want to be careful because I know when people go back and watch this, the, the stigma that dispatching carries is it, it can cut deep sometimes. So when I say free, if you have a computer, good, you've already paid for it. If you have a cell phone, good, you've already paid yeah. for it. Right. If you have access to a load board, good you know, your friends, your friend gave you their login. So you got to kind of be creative. But if you don't have anything, okay, you got to get you a laptop, you got to get you a phone, you got to pay your phone bill, right? So so those things, you know, I, I do want to make clear because you have people <laughs> out there that will come back and say, well, it's not technically free because you got to have a, a, a an account with DAT. Well, no, you don't. If somebody gave you their login or right. somebody put you on their plan or whatever, right? Let so, so. <laughs> You know, I, I don't want to dice it up, but the word free to me, I think we do need to get it out of our vocabulary as a species. However, yeah. to put it in proper context, there's an, a level of investment, but you can be creative to where, you know, it can be relatively cost effective. Bars. OK, so check this out, y'all. If for nothing, for his honesty, you hear me? <clears throat> I never done an interview with somebody that was like, hold on, wait. <laughs> You hear me? Because, I mean, a lot of y'all are sensitive. No offense. You know, well, if you're sensitive, you're still going to get some offense. So there's no point in me saying that. All right. So, but, uh, uh, you know, he has to make sure, like, this is good, man. This is good. Because <laughs> most people don't care enough to go back and, like, yo, 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 word check and all of that. Yo, he does. So he's very honest with y'all, right? Give you the bad up front. When I first met my wife, I was mean as hell. Right. Like I was super mean because I wanted her to see that side of me first. And if she can survive it, it's like the Hunger Games or something. If she can survive that, then she was worthy enough to get the roses and then all of that extra nice, mushy, gooey uh, paws stuff later on. Right. Because traditionally we show our best at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And then people take you for a, either a simp or somebody they can walk over or a kindness for weakness or whatever. This weeds out the guys who just ain't got too much up here. By him going back and just letting you know all of the, hey, it could cause something. It could have a problem. When he was talking about like, hey, you might be dealing with stress, uh, you know, stress on this and people that's stressed and all of that, that's good. So it'll weed out you guys would you be like, man, I just thought I could just push a button and be rich. You know, weed them out, weed them out. But for people that actually want a real business, real, I'm talking about real grownups. For some reason, we're out outside here offline. We understand things. But when we get on the Internet, for some reason, we become infants and just don't get anything. So when you tell people, oh, you can make money fast with this, their brain translates it to, OK, magic. And I'm rich. Like, no, use your common sense that you normally have offline. You still got to do something, man. So it don't get no better than this. Like what he's talking about, guys, he's going to give you like full guides, uh, the community on top of that. It comes with this context. Like, I'm still excited about that part. Um, all right, let's get to it. OK, so what is the ultimate goal or mission statement for your brand? The ultimate goal and mission statement for my br brand 
is making a better business decision. And I lead by that simply because if you know better, you do better, right? Which yeah. turns out, you know, to be currency because that's what the bottom line is, right? So yeah. I'm saying it all with that statement. You know, if you if you know better, you do better. Go out there and make a better business decision for yourself because I see too many people, especially owner operators or, you know, wives that are at home or you know, just whoever, whoever I come across, they're not making the best business decisions. Um, and that's, that's just because of a lack of vision, a lack of seeing things for what they truly are. So that's what I want for myself first and others, right? Because I, I have to go out here and yeah. I, I actually have to do what I'm, I'm saying. I got to, you know, I don't want to be a person that says one thing and I'm not experiencing what I'm saying. So for me, I've learned as time goes on, I'm like, Dang it. If I knew that, I would have done this. If I if I just went that way, I, I could have went that way, right? So now I get to say like, okay, let me put this out there for the people who see me, for the people who watch me. They say, hey, man, you know what? I, I want to become a business owner just like you. And I, I turn sure. around and say to them, I say, okay, it took me seven years to understand what I was doing. So to become just like me, you would need to know what I know today because I want to prevent exactly. you from, from, from going through the different parts of me that I can filter out today. So that's the main thing I want is for you to make a better business decision, save money, make more money, take care of your family. Uh, if, if, if time is what you want, don't do what I did. You know, don't go out there and say, I'm going to spend six years driving a truck because I really want to own my own business. Don't do that. Build your credit for six years and go out and buy you a truck and business. Because at that point, you, you've saved so much headache in six years. You're still fresh and green. I can't move around the same way I used to when I was you know, 30 as being 35. Now, when I say move around the same way, driving a truck for six years, you know, it's it's like, you know, sometimes your feet start hurting. Like, wait a minute, man, I ain't never had this before. So, you know, if, and for some guys, it doesn't bother them. Some guys, they they put their bodies, you know, through these extreme different scenarios and and what have you. Um, However, for me, again, at the beginning, I took advantage of the trucking business simply because it was an opportunity for me to make money. So if you for are sure. inspired and you're interested in the things that I'm saying, learn the things I'm telling you and make a better decision than I've made so you can get more out of it. That's that's as much as I can do for anybody. Extremely noble, man. Extremely noble. So check this out, guys. It's some of you right now. It's an urge. It's just this little itch. You just can't help it. You're thinking about opening another window and seeing if you can YouTube or Google all of this stuff on your own. And you can. Let us tell you now, you can. Uh, but for $10, guys, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. By all means, go and take two, three more years trying to figure out all of this stuff. Two of the best things to leverage. Other people's knowledge, that's number one. And then other people's, this man right here has extreme amounts of knowledge that you guys will be able to literally plug into. You guys remember the Matrix when Neo goes in there and he just plug, they plug the little situation back there and then like they type in what they want want him to know and in like 10 minutes, like he know how to fly a plane or do jujitsu or some, some stuff like that. This is leverage, okay? Yes, you can go and figure it out, but who the heck wants to do that? Most of you guys watching this right now are still battling your midlife crisis. You ain't got time to sit and go, well, I bet I, bet I can figure this out myself. If you got an opportunity with a specialist or a coach that can take you from where you are to where you want to be, at least by, you know, as much as their experience can allow them to help you, then allow them to freaking help you. Stop being stubborn, man. Some of you guys have been on my channel since 2015 and still haven't took advantage of any opportunity I put in front of you, but you're ducking and weaving bill collectors and whining on Facebook about stuff that you wish you can afford and hating on other people who are making moves. This is $10 for a program where he's giving you a full-fledged business model that is proven it works and hella people are doing this, but he teaches you in a unique way. So make a move. What message do you have for any audience members who want to make money with this? Like a last sign off. I would definitely say that I I do not look at this as, you know, you're paying for information because, you know, it's super easy to compare that to, you know, I can just go on Google. I can just YouTube this. And there, there was one quote I heard within the last year that changed everything for me, that if information 
was all we needed, we would all be rich. Okay. So when you're investing into what someone's putting in front of you, truly think about what you're actually paying for. Because if I was to put a price to this, maybe I wouldn't sell it. Maybe I would say, well, it's priceless. I just can't, I just don't want people getting a hold of this or, you know, let me put it at around 2,500 because to me it's worth that much. What you're, what you're really doing is you're creating a network for yourself because when you join, you know, my path and what I'm doing, it, this information may not go into effect for you today, but maybe two years along the line, you say, wait a minute, Winston did tell me that I could add a service to my dispatching business. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I've been dealing with Winston for two years and it's, it's just not clicking. So you're, you're, you're essentially what you're doing. You're, you're protecting your investment, which is truly, you know, whatever your investment means to you is truly what the yeah. loss is. It's not, it's not a $10 what I'm offering you. It's what you're doing. Like, so if you started a trucking business and you're a hundred thousand dollars in debt, right? That's what you're trying to get under control. You know, that's what you're wanting to protect. And that's what I'm here to do. Right. So it's not, it's, it's not a, you know, pay me join and everything is going to go well. It's a network network with me, build your network. You never know when you may need something. You never know. Like, for example, I got a buddy, he just joined uh, with me and he runs his trucking business on my authority. Right. He says, Hey, yeah, you know, I got a trucking lane. I got this, I got that. But one thing he cannot do by himself is he can't recruit drivers for, for the love of it. He, he's just not that type of guy. He just, it's just not his <laughs> thing. So in one day, I recruited, I think about five drivers and I landed one out of five that actually is running his truck right now as we speak. And I was able nice. to do that for him. And I, I did charge him. I did charge him to do it, but I charged him 40 bucks. Right. And the money yeah. didn't even go to me. It, it, well, it did go to me, but it really went to my wife who was doing the back end work. And I said, Hey, I'm yeah. not going to ask her to do it for free. Um, but you know, we, we got to help her out. Right. But a driver would cost the average person nearly $1,500. If you call a recruiter right now, or if you go on, sure. you know, if you get somebody to recruit drivers, you're going to get hit over the head for stuff like that. So maybe you paid $10 and you joined, but then you, you found out that, yo, I need 30 drivers. Winston, can you help me? Well, I'm not going to charge you $5,000, dude. I'm going to go, oh, you're in my network, bro. Let's, let's network. Let's yeah. work something out. So that's really what you're doing if you decide to. And, oh. and this is not a sales pitch. It matters to me if you join, but what I don't do is I don't have these emotional ties. Like, oh my gosh, these people are not joining. W what it is, is that, you know, again, I feel like I have a lot more to offer and I do want to speak on when I say that, what I mean, like, for example, I just designed and I launched a trucking app that allows mm -hmm. you to learn the trucking business because I'm putting these modules, courses and, and all this stuff on there. It allows you to save money on ad spend. It allows you to cut out the middleman, go directly to the shipper. When shippers sign up, go directly to any brokers, find dispatchers that are you know, doing great business and, and calculate, manage. It's a, it's a TMS software. It does all of this. you know. And I'm not charging thousands to, to use it. It's an app. You can download it right now. It's called Easy Go Manager. Www, yeah, you can go to the yeah. site, www.easygomanager.com or go to your app store, Easy Go Manager. It's $7 a month. If you want to try it out, you get a three-day free trial. You can buy it outright. I even have it at the point to where you can buy the whole software, white label it, and sell it if you want to, right? So, Come on, man. You know, I'm not looking at it like, oh, I have a course to sell and this is what I have to move. I look at it like I want to partner up with other business owners and be a part of what they're doing. Eventually, they might need me or they may not need me, right? But if we can have yeah. a network large enough where you have enough resources, you'll never put your business in danger because there's always that one phone call that you can make to change something. So that's what I'm doing. Hey, come on, man. Look, listen, why, why are you trying to win awards right now, man? Like, what's up? <laughs> listen, y'all, if, you know, I told them a story about when, uh, like, I lost, like, 85% of my income. I don't know if you heard that story. 85% uh, of my income when Google destroyed, like, 85% of my assets, the income went with it. And I was in Mexico with my family, right? And uh, like we, we already got people in the United States that's like, oh yeah, I shouldn't have went to Mexico. People that are just hate and be waiting for your downfall, so they definitely ain't finna help you, right? right? And it got to the point to where like I had to reach out to my network, like you said, my network. If it wasn't for my network, dude, imagine being 
in a horrible financial situation in a completely different country and you don't even speak the language fluently and you got your wife, your like you said, your three children and your freaking animals, right? And it's the same day, the same day that you're supposed to leave the Airbnb that you're in and go to a different one. If I didn't have that network, <laughs> if I didn't have that network, so listen, guys, so he just killed it right there. It's not even about you paying for just information or something. It, this is what got me excited at the beginning when he talked about the contacts that he's going to give you guys. The network, the network, the network. If you're interested in any type of business model, if it don't come with some type of network or community, you should probably exit off and, and like, like get rid of it. So guys, as y'all can see, he knows the stuff like the back is dang on hand. Um, this ain't just some dude that I brought on here. Like I've been, I've been checking out his content. I checked out his, uh, his, his, uh, his Instagram and everything. He does this and his network. I've been paying attention to that as well. It's real. It's legitimate. So <laughs> reaching your little pocketbook, 10 bucks. Join the community, guys. I, I want this for you guys. I, I want this for you. But guess what? We can't want it more than you do. You have to want something that's going to change your life or can change your life. But remember, there is no cash in without action. So just joining something and thinking it's magically going to change something and you don't do nothing. No, that's not what is going on here. Uh, but I was super excited to bring him on here. Winston, it was awesome having you on here. Guys, uh, tell them where to go to follow you. Okay, so you can find me on all social media platforms and just type in Winston P. Strategist. You don't have to type underscore or you know point anything. Winston P. Strategist. All social media platforms, I'll come up. You know, if, if, if you're going on LinkedIn, just type in Winston Parline, but you can find me just about anywhere so tiktok instagram youtube facebook and uh yeah that's how you can get in contact with me and i respond too that's okay. another thing I, I i um i actually read everything i get i don't respond to the ones that you know are like spam or something but you know when people really want to get a hold of me i can tell by what you're writing if you really need my time and i will respond back because i i get i can't even tell you how many dms i get with different questions but you know, some questions I know, like, okay, I, I don't have time to answer this today. Some people will DM me like, hey, please, man, I, I, I really have to get a hold of you. When I see urgent messages like that, I'm like, okay, I got to respond to this guy because I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just some type of advice. Maybe it's a big purchase decision or maybe, he, you know, whatever it could be. So I do respond in those cases. Um, if you can't get a hold of me that way, um, you know, all, 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 all you got to do is just, you know, follow me. You know, I, I am seeing your messages. You know, just keep at it and, and I'll definitely be able to get back to you. If, you. if it's YouTube, trust me, I see all of that and you can go read. I do respond. So if you need me, just say, hey, man, can you please email me? I, I got something urgent or whatever. And that that normally gets my attention every time. Exactly. OK, that's where it's at. So that's where you can find him on the outside, guys. But you'll definitely get responses from him faster if it's inside the network. No, that's not a pitch. That's just common sense. True. You're, we have to treat our, our customers and our community. We just we're obligated to. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel blessed to bump shoulders with Winston today. So you guys can bump shoulders with Winston as well inside his network. Um, so see you guys in the next one.